Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. We're going to get started. Happy Friday. Happy IFF. Um, I think I know most of you. For those of you whom I don't know, I'm Mrs. Feldman. I am the Director of Alumni Relations, and I am delighted to see you all today. Each year since 1990, the PCDS Alumni Association has named an outstanding alum of the year. This individual has distinguished himself or herself in community service, professional achievement, and service to PCDS. This year, we are delighted to honor Augustine Gomez from the class of 1999. While the Alumni Association will officially be honoring him during a luncheon later today, we are so lucky that he is here this morning to spend time with all of you. As a student here, Mr. Gomez was a varsity athlete on the basketball team, and he was a Project Excellence Scholar. After PCDS, he earned his undergraduate degree from ASU and his MBA from the University of Arizona. As the first person in his family to have graduated from college, Mr. Gomez credits PCDS with changing the trajectory of his life. Mr. Gomez served on the PCDS alumni board for a remarkable 10 years, which included two terms as president. Among many noteworthy achievements in alumni engagement during his time as president, he was the driver behind the launch of the Alumni Impact Initiative, through which the Alumni Scholarship Fund was born. This program has had a significant impact on alumni philanthropy and has helped to fund many scholarships for deserving students here at our school. Mr. Gomez's perseverance and community leadership are an inspiration to current PCDS students as well as fellow alumni. Today, he is the principal partner and CEO of Valter Real Estate Investments in Scottsdale and is a national council member of the Urban Land Institute. The PCDS Alumni Association is proud to honor him for the many ways in which he has supported our school and remained a spirited member of our alumni community for so many years. We will have some time for questions when he concludes his presentation. So if anything arises, um, please save them till the end. And now please join me in welcoming the 2024 Phoenix Country Day School Alumnus of the Year, Mr. Augustine Gomez. Hello, everybody. So before I get started, I'll have to tell you, um, I typically don't, I'm typically not this labored in my speech. On Tuesday, I found out that I got Bell's palsy, which is like a temporary paralysis of the face. And so that's why I'm having these issues. So if you see me talking out of the side of my mouth or whatever, or an eye irrit irritation, that's what you know is, is going on. But we're here and so is life, right? Um, but we'll get started. So, Wow. I would have never expected this, um, and I don't say this really to be funny. I was an average student at best, and uh, my claim to fame was winning the, uh, the most outspoken student in my class, along with Ariel, Ariel and uh, Neville. But you current students can thank me in part for something quite important. Did you know, before John Krause and the class of 98 and I came along, PCDS had a no facial hair policy? That's right. I proudly helped lead the revolution that tore down the tyrannical walls of oppression. This grassroots campaign culminated in, in the board eliminating the policy. I defiantly sported, as you can see here, a 1980s uh, boyish Hollywood mustache and John Krause uh, undergrown beard would not be denied. And today, students are able to live their best facial haired lives. You're welcome. But in all seriousness, I'm humbled and honored by this award. And from the bottom of my heart, there are so many folks whom I'd like to thank. First, thank you to the PCDS Alumni Board, led by Tiffany Pondelik, for this amazing honor. Leslie Feldman, my friend and classmate, an incredible director of alumni relations. Many board of trustee members, past and present, who have honored me, or I'm sorry, who have mentored me, helped me, and inspired me, even when they didn't know it. And, uh, and of course, thank you to Headmaster Andy Roden and Assistant Head Raza Barrow. I want to thank the late Barbara Weider. Without her founding the beacon of light to us known as Project Excellence, excuse me, sorry, um, my PCDS experience and many others would not have been possible. My family, my parents for their unwavering support and commitment to instilling love, discipline, work ethic, and character in me. My brother Abel for, for always instilling confidence in me uh, while I was growing up, 
and young knowing that he had my back. My wife, Rachel, my better half, for keeping me on the straight and narrow and for the love you show our family. My two-year-old son, Joaquin, and my 11-week-old daughter, Richie Raquel, for giving me the ultimate sense of purpose, one that transcends any personal accomplishments, the privilege of being your father. Acknowledge this. So students, I speak with you today. Feel free to reflect on your own life and educational experience up till now. With all the positives and negatives, no judgment, no chest pounding, just reflect. And look forward to how the next 20 years of your life may look for you. So here we go. This award means so much to me because it reaffirms that I've tried. Through successes and failures, I've tried. Why do I say this? To be honest, for a while now, when I look back at my time as a PCDS student, I felt I underperformed relative to my potential. Not that I dwell on it much, but if I'm honest, it's true. While a student here, I didn't really fully appreciate the magnitude of PCDS and the role that it was playing and could and would eventually play in my life. It wasn't really until I was in college that it clicked. Then I began to fully appre appreciate PCS as an institution, a community, and an elite education. But more than education, a provider of opportunity. As a child, life was, life was tough, but I was loved. Both of my parents had to drop out of high school early to work. Both parents were manual laborers. Early in my life, we struggled living in poverty. My biological parents were married as teenagers. My mom had my older brother, Abel. Unfortunately, she lost a middle, my middle brother at birth, and then she had me. Soon after, my biological parents were divorced. By nine years old, my biological father had been murdered. Caught up in the wave of violence that plagued most poor neighborhoods in the late 80s and early 90s. My mom remarried my stepdad, who I, refer, who I lovingly refer to as my dad. They raised me and made me who I am today. My mother still cleans homes for a living, and my dad refers to himself as a retired ditch digger. Just a quick note. He did so with only one thumb, losing the other in a work accident, but no crying over spilled milk, right? As children and young adults, both my parents worked picking lettuce in fields and other crops uh, in Arizona. For 12 plus hours a day, many times over 100 degree, in 100 degree heat in Arizona, they picked crops, part of the supply chain that ensured produce shelves were stocked for yesterday's Trader Joe's, AJ's, and Sprouts. Today, I'm the first in my family, immediate and extended, to graduate from college and certainly to obtain a master's degree. PCDS would lay the foundation that allowed me to take hard work ethic that my parents instilled to the next level. It gave me the opportunity to succeed beyond anything I ever could have imagined, to chart my own path to success and largely be in a position today to control so much of my own destiny. Aside from my family, I'll go so far as to say PCDS has had the most positive impact on my life. Now speaking to you at 43, at my 25th reunion, and again, with no obligation to do so, PCDS continues to give back to me and acknowledges me with this honor, so thank you. Again, my PCDS experience, uh, well beyond my time as a student, has played a monumental role in my life. I'm convinced my trajectory today, with it versus, versus without it, is binary. Before PCDS, I attended Papago Elementary in the Creighton School District. I was always a kid who was generally tested well and, and was in advanced courses, but I'd get my work done, get bored, and get into trouble. In an under-resourced school, most teachers simply don't have the time to focus on you in a meaningful way. In Papago, not much has changed. I was just looking it up, and they are still currently at the bottom 10th percentile for reading and math comprehension, currently ranked 550th out of 600 elementary schools in Arizona. After one attentive teacher, Mr. Palayo, recommended that I apply to Project Excellence with a friend of mine, my life would change. I began attending Project Excellence in the summer of fifth or sixth grade, and I was blown away by the campus and the teachers. They personified passion and engagement. I met Mr. Mike Swingler, Melanie Sines, Ms. Deanne Guerra, and many other teachers. During our gym time, I met Bob Hendrickson, Coach Kosselberg, Brian Ellingson. Many of them became coaches and mentors for me several years later. And my fellow PCDS scholars gave me the, my first glimpse into an environment where everybody was intentional about education. 
few of these scholars would eventually become my PCDS classmates and lifelong friends like Eddie Sherman and Tope Oyemi. So in ninth grade, I entered PCDS full time. I wasn't intending to go to PCDS. Summer of eighth grade, a friend was offered a scholarship, but he didn't want to attend PCDS alone. I told him I'd apply, and if I was accepted, I would attend too. At the last minute, he backed out. And after a talk with my dad, I still attended. When I got to PCDS, it was a bit of a shock. Academically, this was next level. Everyone here was so smart, and even more than smart, granted much smarter than I was, everyone seemed so well prepared, trained to write, trained to study, trained to manage time. I'll never forget Dr. Allison's freshman English course. I get my first paper back. When I submitted it, I thought, nice work, not too shabby. <laughs> I was horrified when I received my first grade, D plus, with a note from Dr. Allison, where's the meat? I guess my writing needed some improvement. Thank you, Dr. Allison, for teaching me the lifelong importance of great writing. Culturally, it was a shock. To put this into context, at my middle school, over 90% of the kids were Hispanic, still today. My freshman year at PCDS, I was the only Hispanic male in the high school, and I don't really think about race much, but the shift was so dramatic I couldn't help but notice it. A lot has changed here. Kudos to PCDS for its leadership and focus on diversity as a defining characteristic of the community. What an amazing job you've done over the last 25 years. Socioeconomically, I expected this shock as a scholarship kid attending an expensive private school. But I didn't expect the community to embrace me the way it did. My family's socioeconomic status wasn't a barrier in forming relationships. I was never treated differently, and I was always treated with dignity and respect. I can remember on our freshman trip to Chauncey Ranch, Ann Salzman, student counselor at the time, was so welcoming and did such an amazing job of creating a class community. My mom asked me, how was the trip? I tell her, everyone was hugging me all the time. I'm not sure what's up with that. That didn't happen at my old school. But the love never stopped and hadn't stopped. While my personal life was quite tumultuous during high school, PCDS, the teachers, my classmates, and now many of them lifelong friends were a sanctuary for me. I always tell the story of my freshman year on the basketball team. There was only one gym at the time, and we practiced late. My mom was working late as usual, so I was waiting under the dim light of the upper school parking lot waiting for her. PCDS security comes by, driving by in a golf cart. He asked me, are you okay? I said, yeah, and he moves on. I recall thinking to myself, I'm in the middle of Paradise Valley. This is the safest I'm gonna feel all day. As luck would have it, by my senior year, I would go on to be captain of the varsity basketball team. Thank you coaches Hendrickson, Kosower, and Ellingson. It's one thing for your parents to tell you, you're the leader, don't be a follower but it felt good to have this leadership quality reinforced by coaches and peers. So thank you gentlemen for the privilege. So I graduated from PCDS from class of 99. I can't express enough my gratitude to my teachers who prepared me for college so well and made the next stage of my life possible. I had no choice but to work throughout college and my PCDS education and training gave me the tools to manage this, allowing me to work 40 hours a week, financially supporting myself, file on Dean's list, in college, not my freshman year though. Dr. Allison's freshman uh, English class, Mr. Flail's class, Kuhn's English class, Mr. Martin's history and Holocaust courses were amazing. I'll never forget the Holocaust course our senior year. It left such an impression on me that I vowed to visit Auschwitz and Birkenau one day. Several years later, or several years ago, my wife and I were able to do that. As I mentioned, I'm the first in my family to attend college or graduate from college or grad school. Without PCDS, it never would have happened, trust me. During my junior year, I was actually questioning whether or not I would apply, more or less attend college. Thank you to Paul Schweiker for guiding me through the college process that was new to me and my family. Most importantly, thank you for your generosity and encouragement during a fairly trying time in my life. Ultimately, I attended, P I attended ASU in the fall of 1999. PCDS has, plays, has played an outside role in my professional career as well. From my first job to college, learning the importance of an internship by my buddy Mike Kahn, <laughs> to landing my first internship, to landing my first job in home building that would lay the groundwork for the rest of my career. PCDS has played a role. 
Today, I'm the principal partner and CEO of Volter. Volter is a real estate investment and development firm based here in Ganey Ranch in Scottsdale, founded 45 years ago as the McRae Group of Companies by my partner, Ron McRae, who's here. When Ron and I first met 18 years ago, I would discover that he is a former PCDS parent. We didn't know that he had a PCDS connection when we first met, but we quickly put that together. So back to my freshman year of college. I need a job to support myself. Winter break of my freshman year, I come back to PCDS for a basketball game. After the game, I see Coach Hendrickson. While catching up, I tell him I need a job and I'm looking for ideas. He says, go to Ganey Village Health Club in Spa. It just opened. Many of you likely work out there today. Coach Hendrickson tells me, Bennett Dorrance has a company, DMV and Associates, and they just built it. Bennett is a former PCDS trustee, current, current, uh, current advisory trustee, and the person whom this building is named after. DMV and Associates stands for Drew, Mark, and Bennett. When I get to the village, management tells me, I can work at the towel desk or I can work at the cafe. I ended up working in the cafe, and because of this, over the next year or more, I meet all the company executives, including their CEO. They all worked out at lunch and ordered from the cafe. After some time, I mustered up the courage and finally asked the CEO, Drew, if he'd be willing to meet with me to discuss my career track. He was an attorney turned real estate developer, and I was on a pre-law track studying philosophy at ASU. He agreed to meet with me. I guess at that time, I didn't have any context. Looking back, the fact that the CEO of one of the largest and most respected development companies in the Southwest was willing to meet with me was such a privilege and a lucky break. DMB has developed award-winning developments such as DC Ranch, Silverleaf, Verado, Centerpoint, and Forest Highlands and Flagstaff, and many more in the US. I literally called Drew's office for daily for about a month. His, sec his secretary would tell me, I'm sorry, Drew's out of, out of town. Drew's in a meeting, Drew's unavailable. I tell her, wait, didn't you tell him that's Augie Gomez, the kid from the cafe? <laughs> he told me to call. Finally, I meet with Drew, and a 30-minute meeting lasted two hours, and I get to tell him my story, including my time at PCDS and how I got here. By the end of the meeting, he asked me, so what are you up to this summer? I tell him, no plans, just working. He says, how about you work here as an intern? Uh, yeah. So, began my career in real estate investments and development almost 22 years ago. Another PCDS connection. During my time at PCDS, I attended school with the Uyghur family. None of them were in my class, but I knew them, but I knew them because it's a small school. Garth Uyghur, their father, was also the president of the Board of Trustees at the time. After DMB and another great real estate job in college, I was now in my senior year at ASU, set to graduate with a degree in philosophy. I reached out to Garth, who I had met at a PCDS event the time before. Garth has been a prominent figure in home building and real estate for years, and I was looking for advice. I told him my plan, going to law school, but love my jobs in real estate. He says, well, you can always go back to law school. I asked him for recommendations for next steps. He says, go to a large public home builder, get a job in land acquisition and entitlement, which is real estate talk for analyst and project manager. He says, and you'll get the most useful experience in the shortest amount of time. He says, process for getting projects approved by corporate committees, very similar if you decide to raise your own money and start your own company. Then he sets me up with a multitude of interviews with top firms. I ultimately accept my dream job, making two times more than I ever anticipated with a top home builder. It was a national recruiting program intending to hire and train the top 25 recruits and interviewees. First program of its kind. I owe my first job to Garth Uyghur. Thank you, Garth. Garth and I have worked on various initiatives together and still talk often. After two years at a home builder, it was time to strike out on my own. I'm 25 years old, and it's 2006 at the peak of the market. Slightly overconfident, I know. It was terrible timing, as the great financial crisis was about to take hold. Fortunately, I scrapped my first idea, and in 2007, with a few partners, started another company and was able to raise a substantial amount of investment capital, ultimately purchasing many projects at major price discounts. I'll save the details of sleeping in my office, working well over 80 hours a week during this time. By 2010, I was 29, and two and a half years, we invested over 100 million of equity capital. It's about 150 million in today's dollars, a wild success. In Arizona during that time, most companies, most active companies, we were in, in, in Arizona at that time, we were one of the most active companies in our industry. While everyone was watching the financial world crater, our business was growing. The company was a success, and I thought we were on our way to becoming the next big thing. 
Bad news, I picked the wrong partners. I'll spare the details of my partner's actions, but to su suffice it to say, we had a major falling out. By 2010, I was out of my company office. Any financial means I had was tied up in my company. We were on a path to a lawsuit. I had no money outside my company to litigate, and I was flat on my back. Back to PCDS. Several years prior to launching my company, I had formed a relationship with a PCDS parent who I met at a middle school volleyball game. This parent was also in the business. At that time, my little cousin, Dominique Gomez, played in the middle school volleyball team with his daughter. Yes, this is the same Nikki Gomez you all know as the assistant coach of the state champion Lady Eagles basketball team. Go Eagles! So after my falling out with my business partner, we ended up in a lawsuit. This parent, who I met at a volleyball game years before, literally helped me navigate the entire legal process, save my ownership in the company I co-founded. He was my personal angel investor. Today, he and his partner, another former PCDS parent, now invest with us at Walter, and he's still a dear friend. Thank you, Craig. Another PCDS connection. The attorney who represented me in my lawsuit, I found out, was also a PCDS parent. Crazy. In 2012, I meet Ron McRae, my current business partner. We met for lunch. Shortly thereafter, I came on to his firm. That would be the start of an executive track at the McRae Group of Companies and now a partnership at Walter. To start at the firm as a director 12 years ago and become president after six years and to soon thereafter CEO and full partners with Ron has been a fun ride and a dream come true. We've never argued and almost always see eye to eye, a lesson in picking the right partners of any kind. Ron and I have transacted on dozens of deals together with a total value well in excess of $600 million. Today we have 52 active projects in four states, five markets, and we're growing. These investments and developments include industrial developments, master plan communities and housing subdivisions, and mixed use projects. I've had so many great experiences in recent history. I've been on the board of major banking institutions for a few years, and today I represent Volter in industry uh, leadership groups locally and nationally. I'm a member of Alder, a national executive group focused on generational and civic leadership, and a current PCDS parent and friend is also a member of the group. In my professional day-to-day, -day, I work with people who are at the top of their industry, including friends that represent us in various circumstances, like Jordan Rose and Court Rich of Rose Law Group. So has PCDS had an impact on my career? Safe to say it has. I'd like to talk a little bit about community. My parents established my values, and, and, and uh, those values no doubt further were enhanced by my community service at PCDS. It ultimately opened my, eyes, opened my eyes to the blessings of philanthropy. Whether with Molly Castro and Project Excellence here at PCDS, Junior Achievement, teaching courses and fundraising for them, or giving time, treasure, and talent it has become a part of my core. A highlight for me was my time on the PCDS alumni board, including two terms as board president. A big thank you to past presidents Herman Lukowitz and Clarissa Robinson for showing me the ropes. My ability to give back to PCDS with my time has been such a privilege and I'm forever grateful for it. During my time as alumni board president, we focused on alumni engagement, uh, encouraging alums to reconnect with the school. I was also privileged to help launch wonderful programs like PCDS Connect for alumni networking and PCDS Impact that today has raised nearly a million dollars with all proceeds directed to financial aid and project excellence. Incredible. Thank you again to Mr. Roden, Ms. Abero, Ms. Feldman, Mr. Joyce, and Tiffany Pondelik and many others for making me look good during my time as president and allowing me to have the ultimate philanthropic experience. Finally, becoming a member of the May Sue Tally Society has, give, has really enriched my life. To go from a scholarship student to someone who is now fortunate enough to prioritize giving back to PCDS, what a greater blessing than to give back in a way that is meaningful for my family and me. A little about my PCDS friends. Today, all of my friends in my adult life, in some way, I view through the lens of my lifelong friendships at PCDS, a litmus test for any new friendships. Character, intelligence, curiosity, empathy, drive, success, all found in my PCDS friends, many of whom I've known for over 30 years. 
Mike Kahn, Jay Kahn, Eric Shoemaker, those two are here today, Eddie Sherman, Topei Oyemi, Liz Houston, Leslie Feldman, Shari, Kelly Noble, Jenny Gill, Rebecca Reedy, and many more. For decades now, we've known each other, we've watched each other go on to have successful careers, and in some instances, get married, have children, and we continue to stay close. Thank you for some of the best memories and most meaningful relationships of my life. So what's next? Duty. Duty to keep growing, keep learning, keep loving, keep giving. With a family of my own, now more than ever, I feel the duty to be the best I can be, to represent my family, friends, my company, and institutions like PCDS to the highest degree. As a member of the broader community, finding meaningful ways to positively impact those around me. In short, to look beyond my own self-interest. As students here today, I encourage you to start early and begin this journey now. There's no greater feeling than positively impacting others. My standing here today is a testament to that. The blessings will come back tenfold. So keep working, keep striving, keep excelling, keep loving, and keep giving. To my wife, Rachel, my mom, my dad, my brother, and extended family, I promise to continue to make you proud. To my son, Joaquin, and my daughter, Richie Raquel, the next generation of PCDS Eagles. Unfortunately for you, there will be no gentle parenting in our household. If you are lucky enough to attend PCDS, you'll receive so much patience and love here. Daddy needs to balance this out a bit with some tough love at home. Just kidding. <laughs> to my kids, Daddy will never stop loving you and leading by example. So in closing, thank you once again to PCDS for this incredible honor. And thank you all for allowing me to share my story today. <laughs> oh, favorite memory from senior year. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of good ones. Um, no, I, I think um, my favorite memory from senior year was probably the senior trip. Yeah, I mean, it was like a time... It was a time for reflection, um, and, and that was like, I think the start for me, sort of transformationally of realizing like, I was leaving PCDS and I was, you know, I wasn't gonna be around my friends anymore and like, what was that gonna look like? And we had the best time doing all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it, was, it was a really good time. I think I, I, uh, by the time that we got to that point where we all knew we were graduating and we were moving on to something else, um, it was uh, it was a fun time to appreciate each other for sure. Yeah. Um, that was really I think that was really more natural. Like so when I when I got to ASU I didn't know what I wanted to major in at all, um, and so I just kind of was I, I really enjoyed a, a philosophy course with Mr. Flail here, and and so I added that to my list of things and. Uh, and really my counselor said, well, I'll just take the broadest amount of courses that you can take and see if there's anything that you like. And I remember getting to my freshman philosophy 101 course and I walk into a room, there's 400 kids and my professor says, um, just so you all know, he said, you know, after a few weeks, about half of you will drop the class. And he goes, after several more weeks, we'll give you your first quiz and then about another half of you will drop. And he goes, and by the time it's all said and done, for those who like small classes, there'll be about 50 of you left. And I was like, I like my odds. So, stuck around. Yeah. He is living in New York. He's been living in New York pretty much the entire time out of college. And, uh, and he's working... Um, Let's see, is he, uh, is he at uh, 
Yeah, he's at Deutsche Bank. That's where he's at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it's hard to explain. It's literally changed dramatically. I mean, when we were here, this building wasn't here. The Jaffe Gymnasium wasn't here. I mean, uh, aquari- you know, uh, the Aquatic Center was not here. It was like, I mean, it was totally different. I mean, I don't know. I think outside of Birch Hall, that's probably the only building that's left, right? Yeah, it's totally different. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, the quad is very different. <laughs> Oh, my God, my dirt lift, clearly. (laughs) Yeah, most outspoken. Yeah, you know, it was it was uh, it was funny. Like I, I I don't know, maybe maybe like I was like this, uh, you know, like Ripley's Believe It or Not character. But everybody seemed to re- be really intrigued by me. Uh, so I, <laughs> I'm kidding, uh, but I did not. I, no, I never felt like I was, you know, like I like I was. I, I couldn't speak up. I couldn't say what I felt. I couldn't, you know, incorporate my story that may have been different than a lot of people that I was going to school with. Right. I always felt like people were interested in. In hearing that perspective, right, and and I think that I think that lends itself to, you know, one a, a, a phenomenal growth environment at PCDS, but two, I think it's a testament to how students here are encouraged to have intellectual curiosity, right, and be open-minded and to think about things that are broader than the world that they're living in. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I when I started at PCDS, um, I think maybe there were three students, in, uh, including me, going into freshman class, maybe four, that were on financial aid or, you know, like Project Excellence students. It wasn't really, at that time, I mean, you got to think, like, this was like, you know, early mid-90s. It wasn't really something that was thought about as like a, a characteristic for a leading institution. And really, I mean, I, I almost feel as though it was right about the time that I was attending PCDS that it became much more pronounced. And I mean, even at that time, I think Carolyn O'Malley became like the, she was on the board of trustees as well. And she became, you know, the head of diversity. So that, it, there was a really, really big push. I mean, now it's almost second nature to you all to think of an educational institution and think about, uh, you know, the overall value of diverse opinions and diverse people of all types. But that wasn't really the case then, and I think it's changed dramatically. Like, I mean, like night and day. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that, I mean, it's hard to say that I would do something different. But one thing that I do tell uh, young, young folks, especially like if they're interning with us, or something like that, as I say, ask a lot of questions. This is the only time, and I mean if you're in school, if you're in an internship or whatever, this is gonna be one of the very few times in your life where you can ask questions and you might even get paid for it. It's one of the only times in your life where you ask questions and adults are happy to answer them. Eventually, the expectation is that you're gonna have to have answers. So take advantage of it. That's what I would say when you're young is, Ask as many questions as possible. Seek advice from as many people as possible, and don't you know? And don't be fearful of of going to people for advice because largely, um, you all will be around great institutions and largely great people. And in those environments, most people are very very happy to help. Um, so I, I, I had a, well, one, I, I got my MBA later. So as I, when I wrapped up my litigation, I was in my early mid thirties and, uh, and immediately I started studying for my MBA program. I, I always felt that I wanted to go back and to be honest, 
as I got into like my mid twenties, I, I didn't. It wasn't as if I felt like, hey, I really need to go and get my MBA because I'm lacking something, because I thought I had I had quite a bit of experience. It was more that I didn't want anybody to be able to deny me an opportunity for something that you know for a piece of paper that I didn't have, and uh, and so I was always very much. Um, you know, interested in checking that box. And as far as my career progression would go, I don't know. I mean, Ron and I were well on our way to forming, you know, such a great relationship and partnership. I'm not sure if it would have, um, I don't, I'm not sure if it would have changed my career tra trajectory at that point, given the, you know, given the firm and what we were doing. But I think, you know, I mean, it would be something for Ron to answer, but I think it certainly uh, was reflective of commitment to my craft, for sure. Thank you all. <laughs>